Hey, what's going on? Today we're going to do The Life of Christ, Part 5. We're going to pick up where we left off last time in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. And if I could title this anything, it would be Judge Me with a Righteous Judgment. Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 says, Judge not, that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Now, we're going to talk concerning judging. Judging, in definition, is to conform a conclusion about someone or to give a verdict to someone. And quite frankly, I get so tired of hearing people say the key phrase, you know, you're judging me. When in reality, most of the time, we're not being judged. See, to judge someone as an example would be to say, because so-and-so listens to worldly music, that they're a sinner. Well, that's a conclusion that we come to. If so-and-so listens to rock or rap, that they're a sinner. It's a conclusion that we came to. That is judging. But an example of not judging someone is to say that, you know, you don't agree with that music and you personally don't think it's of God. That's not judging someone. Uh, that would rather be to forming a conclusion about your own opinion about a certain thing or a certain music. That, that's not judging someone. Another example of not judging someone is to say that you heard them listening to music that sounds like worldly music, so they must not be living right. And what that is is actually falsely accusing someone because you don't know what they're doing. You're thinking they're doing something they shouldn't do, but you don't know for sure, so you're actually falsely accusing them by making these, these accusations, hey, what you're doing is wrong, when you really don't know if what they're doing is wrong because you didn't actually hear maybe the music fully. Maybe you don't know what kind of music it really is. Um, maybe you're, you're just not up to par with what they're doing and perhaps it's actually a religious based who knows but too many times people think of judging someone as a bad thing but Jesus said himself that we are to judge or form a conclusion that if we judge or form a conclusion that we ourselves will be judged on the same thing this is why it's so important to not be a hypocrite and tell someone that something's wrong and then we turn around and take part in the same thing. That's being a hypocrite. Jesus was not saying it's wrong to judge. But what he was saying is if you're going to judge and form a conclusion about someone's actions, then you better not be guilty of those things yourself. And furthermore, the Bible actually tells us to judge one another. John chapter 7 verse 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Again, remember that judging is simply forming a conclusion about someone, such as because so-and-so had an occasional drink, they're a sinner, or because so-and-so lied about something that they sinned. We saw someone do something and we formed a conclusion that what they did was wrong. James chapter 4 verse 11 says, Speak not evil one of another. Brethren, he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. The Bible also tells us that if we see someone do wrong and we form a judgment about what they did, we should keep it to ourselves. That's what it says. It says we should not talk badly about them. After all, everyone makes mistakes. The Bible is so plain about it. James chapter 1 verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is in vain. The bridle is what leashes are attached to to control a horse. When you ride the horse. In other words, the Bible says, if you have nothing good to say, then learn to control your mouth. And don't say anything at all. Furthermore, you should not talk about others or even tell others how you feel. You shouldn't tell others how you feel they should live. 
unless God leads you to speak to them in an encouraging thing. If you let someone know that you feel that them listening to country music is a sin and it upsets them, then maybe you should have allowed them and God to deal with that issue and work out their own salvation. This is the instance of working out your own soul salvation with fear and triplets. We'll go back to Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so every good thing, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. So the Bible also goes on and it says that we should be cautious of those around us. There are false prophets in churches today deceiving many people. But if we would pray for discernment and be watchful, God can allow us to see them coming. We are to know them by their fruits. The way that they carry themselves, the way that they dress, the way that they talk, the way that their eyes wander. If we would pray and be watchful of their fruits, then their fruits will actually show themselves. Jesus himself said that every good tree will bring forth good fruit, and every evil tree will bring forth evil fruit. That evil tree may be able to pretend to have some tasty fruit for a, for a little season, but sooner or later we're going to notice that the fruit is actually rotten on the inside. There's nothing wrong with forming a conclusion about the actions of those around us, but we should keep it to ourselves and we should be watchful and see the fruit that those around us are bearing. Matthew 7, verse 3. I know I'm skipping around here today. Stay with me. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thy own eye? Or how it wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again to rend you. When What Jesus is saying here, is that it doesn't matter how holy and godly of a message you bring forth if you don't live that message. If you live the way that you are preaching or teaching or talking against living, if you don't live what you're preaching, teaching, and talking about, then you're a hypocrite. And Jesus said that you must first fix the problem in yourself before you can tell someone else how to live. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that, see, that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. <clears throat> For what man is there of you? Whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If he then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask of him? The Bible says that <clears throat> if you ask God for it, that he will give it to you. If it's his will to do so. It's God's will for people to be happy and blessed. And if you ask God for something in your life, if it's his will and his time, then he will do it. Verse 12, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even to so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. The classic saying, Do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Thank you for watching this week. Join us again next week.